This is something I hadn't really thought about that was brought up in your book. Um, the fact that most of the nitrogen in the soil is actually not plant available. So perhaps you should start with defining what you mean by plant available nitrogen. Yeah. Um, but then ex explain what, I, I didn't know that. I think you had a number in there like 3% of the nitrogen, something like that of the, of the nitrogen mm -hmm. in the soil. Uh, only 3% of this nitrogen in the soil is actually usable by the plants. The rest is is there, but the plants can't use it. Can you explain that a little bit? I, I better read the book, see, see if that 3% is right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, to be honest, I don't know what the number is, but it, it is a small number, right? So nitrogen is available in sort of three main forms. Um, we have things like nitrate and ammonium. And both of those are salts. These are these things that plants can use as food. So they can absorb ammonium and they can absorb nitrate. And a lot of our synthetic fertilizer has one or both of those in it. There's also some called nitrite, which is a little different than nitrate. Um, microbes and particularly bacteria can easily convert the nitrate to nitrate. So we can kind of ignore that one. The third way is what we call organic nitrogen. So our bodies need nitrogen as well. And we get a lot of our nitrogen from protein. So we eat protein. That protein has a fair amount of nitrogen in it. If I remember right, but don't quote me, it's somewhere around 14% nitrogen. Okay. And that's where we get our nitrogen source. But we have a digestive system that is able to take that protein and digest it and use it. Plants don't have that. So m almost all the nitrogen they get is from this nitrate and ammonia. So if I take a piece of meat and put it in the soil, it's got lots of nitrogen, but plants simply can't use it. If I look at the compost we make, we, we say that's finished compost and it's nice and black, but almost all the nitrogen in there is still organic nitrogen. Hmm. Now it could be in the form of protein molecules, it could be in the form of amino acids, but there are larger molecules. It's not in the form of nitrates yet. And until it becomes nitrates, plants can't use it. Now that's not 100% true. So the most recent research is showing that plants can actually use amino acids. Hmm. Not proteins, because proteins are huge molecules, but amino acids, they can use them. What's not clear yet is how much of the nitrogen they actually get from amino acids. Uh, more, it seems as if the, the bacteria are much better at eating amino acids than plants. And so it seems as if most of that nitrogen in amino acids is used by microbes, not by plants. We know that the majority of nitrogen in plants comes from nitrate and ammonia. I just want to stop you for a second because I know the way a lot of uh, listeners might think. When you say ammonia, they're going to say, oh, but that's a chemical. Um, so can you explain how ammonia exists in nature? <laughs> so th this is one of the biggest myths about organic gardening and the whole concept of the being organic okay people believe that there is organic nitrogen that plants can use and there's inorganic or synthetic nitrogen that plants can use and that's simply not true the nitrogen that plants use is identical no matter where it comes from so if you put manure in your garden until that manure becomes nitrate or ammonium, plants can't use it. Synthetic fertilizer has nitrate and ammonium in it and plants can use it. They're identical, okay? There is no such thing as organic nitrates or organic ammonium, okay? There is such a thing as organic nitrogen, but we're talking about these big protein molecules, which plants can't use. So by the time that plants can use the nitrogen, it's all synthetic, it's all inorganic, it's all nitrates. And this idea that one is a better source than the other because it's organic is, is complete nonsense. And what I find really surprising is that 
you know, in today's world, we, we have some new concepts in science, you know, global warming and the effect of CO2 and so on. We can maybe still discuss some of those things because we're still learning about it. But this business of the nitrate, we knew this 200 years ago. Okay? <laughs> the scientists haven't been debating this for 200 years. Right. <laughs> but organic gardeners are debating it and don't believe it, right? This isn't new science. This is old, old stuff. So that statement is absolutely correct. There, from a plant's perspective, there is no difference between our, an organic source and a synthetic source as far as the nutrients go. And you can have a ammonia can turn into, sorry, uh, like a, let's say I put some cow manure in my soil. That can be converted into ammonia. Yes, and that just and that's basically what happens. just like crapped out of a fungi or a bacteria or something like that. Well, it's that's what happens during decomposition, right? In your yeah. compost pile. So what we put into a compost pile is, it, you know, is an orange. Well, if we if we go down and look at the molecules in that orange, they're big molecules. They're they're large proteins. They're large. Uh, uh, molecules that make the cells are large sugars and starches. They're all these large molecules in that orange, completely useless to plants. They can't use any of it. And so what happens is various types of organisms come along and a lot of them is fungi and then bacteria, and they slowly decompose these big molecules and they're, they're basically eating them up and they're digesting them. And that process continues until everything is broken down into very basic nutrients, nitrates, phosphates, ammonia, then plants can use it. Right. So that decomposition process is what happens in a compost pile and it's continually happening in the soil. In fact, if you think about it, you know, when I put an orange in the ground and a fungi comes along and and degrades that, the fungi actually grows and, and it has babies and it gets more, but at some point that fungi dies. But the fungi is also big molecules, right? So now the fungi has to decompose and it slowly starts decompose it, decomposing, but in order to decompose, that has to happen with other organisms, other microbes, and those microbes are growing. So they're decomposing this stuff, but at the same time growing and building more proteins, more big molecules. So it's a continuous cycle of these molecules becoming smaller and becoming larger and becoming smaller and becoming larger. And at some point, the plant root comes along and says, oh, I'm going to grab a nitrate molecule while it's handy, because if I don't, some bacteria is going to take it away and grow right. and make protein out of it. Right. So plants only get kind of the leftover juices that other things don't use up quicker. Right. <laughs> um, but this process is continually going on. So the nitrate and ammonium are really the only sources. Now, the other thing that is important to understand is that these are very soluble in water. Remember, we started the program with the water magnets. Okay, nitrates and ammonia are little magnets. One's positive, one's negative, and they stick on the water. So when it rains, water flows through the soil. And if we get a lot of water, it, it rushes through the soil and comes out the bottom, but it takes those nitrates and ammonium with it, right? Because they hold on to those things, those are little magnets. So at any given time, there's only a small amount of nitrate floating around the plant roots. Some of it's yes. being turned into larger molecules and, and organisms, and some of it's being washed away by the water. So the total amount at any given time is quite low. And it turns out that the nutrient that's most limiting for plant growth is nitrogen, right? right. All of the other things in, in the average soil or in most gardens, there's, there's enough for the plants to survive, but nitrogen is the rate limiting nutrient. It's the thing that prevents plants from growing. Right. Right. So if we're going to add anything to soil, we have to add some nitrogen because that's the thing that's most likely missing. Well, and your, your point, I remember reading this in the book about how, like, so let's say you, you go and your plants aren't looking good. So you, you go and throw some just, you know, 10, well, 10, 10. <laughs> yeah. So throw something like that on your garden and then there's a huge rain and 
-hmm. you know, so your, your roots grab a little bit as it goes, you know, goes down through the soil or just washes right off the surface. And perhaps some of the soil particles hangs on to some of that. Um, but it made me think of when I first started getting into, you know, really seriously reading, you know, because, so I was always into gardening, but I wasn't a voracious reader and really trying to understand it, right? Mm -hmm. um, my curiosity got going and I was exploring the different types of manure, horse manure, and, you know, because the horse manure was what I had available for free. So now I, I found one of these uh, agricultural extensions where it talks about all the different manures and I had really good results in my garden. Everything was growing well. And I read on these uh, agricultural extensions that horse manure is like the weakest manure there is in terms of you know, available plant available nutrients. I was like, well, how is that the case, right? But I came to understand that just like you're saying, your, your soil with the organic matter in it, sure, it, it doesn't have a lot, but it has enough. And it's, 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 it's got a lot of breaking down left to do, right? It's, it's, it goes right through the horse, right? Very little, the horse gets very little out of the food it eats. So there's all this organic matter still in that horse poop and it's just slowly releasing more, or not, it's not releasing nitrogen, but it, it's, it's providing food for the soil organisms and there, right? So there's, there's more material there to get more nitrogen out of over time. Um, so it, yeah, it made me realize that. Yeah, it's, it's very true. The, the amount of nitrogen available nutrients in compost is actually pretty small, right? Um, and, and particularly if you make it yourself, because every time it rains, it washes it out the bottom, right? Same with manure. If your manure is sitting on a pile somewhere, the rain is constantly washing those nutrients away. What we're really adding are these large molecules that in some future date will provide a nitrogen available molecule. Right? And that's really the value of those manures and the compost is that it's a slow feed. They're slowly decomposing. In fact, compost takes five years to decompose in the garden, right? So we talk about finished compost, which you know takes six months or in, some people think it can be done in two weeks, which of course is a myth. But that's not finished. That's we just think it's finished because we our eyes aren't very good and, and it looks black. Right. But that compost is going to decompose for five years. That's beginning it's, compost. It's beginning <laughs> compost. Right. And over that five year period, it's slowly releasing a small amount of nitrate continuously. And some of it gets grabbed by the plants and some of it gets washed away. And then tomorrow a little bit more will be released. And then we go through that process. And there's enough in there to keep the plants growing. Right? Plants don't want to be surrounded by huge amounts of nitrate. In fact, we know what happens if you do that, you kill the plant, <laughs> right? It's like putting too much fertilizer on your lawn. You kill yeah. the plant if there's too high levels of nitrate. But too high levels of large molecules won't harm the plant. That's fine. You can, you can have that sitting around. It's, it's the released nitrate that's the problem.